Get to the tape. Oh, I see. Just to display it, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to demonstrate this. And who can we use to, uh, to assist us with the demonstration of these measurements? Can we use the interpreter, my lord? Mr. Jonas. Just to take the measurement from the floor to 1.3 and to 1.6, that's all. Oh, you may not use a court official, you use any other person. Just for completeness. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, before I proceed, uh, did you take the measurement of the deceased body? On the deceased body? Yes. Uh, Oh man, I don't know who told the cameraman my request before lunch. I said, guys, can somebody tell the cameraman? Because he has no idea what is going on in the case. He's just at work, just angling the camera. But he needs to, after lunch, make sure that when Ngome Zulu is cross-examining Mangena, that he shows us Vongani Ndanzi's reactions. Listen, Mr. Cameraman, thank you so much for honoring my request. If you didn't catch my previous video, please make sure you check out the playlist. I'm going to link it up here. So, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I feel like calling this uh, Vongani Ndanzi Day, but no, no, we are going to call it Ngome Zulu is exposing how rogue the saps is this day is oh my goodness i don't know what to tell you incredible yes that's one word i'm going to use like while you think you're digesting one thing gomez Zulu comes with another Paw. so listen listen i just want to say do you see Wongani Danzi? do you see him smiling this seems to be a lunch that Wongani Danzi enjoyed today okay on today lunch o'clock Wongani Danzi said finally Finally, somebody came to validate what I said. Yeninda was there on the 17th of June, 2020. And not only is it just a random somebody, mm -mm, he's also from the South African Police Services and his name is Colonel Mangena. Okay, a whole ballistic expert came on board to confirm Wongani Danzi's story. Well, not the whole story, but just that, whew, I'm losing my words. This is a lot to process. This is a lot to process, but I'm going to track through. I'm going to track through and edit this. That Colonel Mangena confirmed that Brigadier Kininda was there, as Bongani Danzi already said. Oh my goodness, drop a like for this video. Listen, I don't know who watched my video as soon as it dropped, but you are number one. You didn't just watch. You said, I'm coming in and I'm coming in hot. And I'm also liking the video right away before I finish watching it. Guys, And that is it's all that we asked for. Just go ahead and like the video. That's your way of giving back to the channel. Absolutely appreciate it. Now, you know what? L let me stop digressing. Let's jump straight into Ngome Zulu versus Mangena. And you're not going to believe the backpedaling that went on here. Meaning the height of the deceased. The height of the deceased. It's one point. We can't use that. Who can we use? Mr. Ngomezo, what do you want to demonstrate? The height of the deceased was 1.77. One point. One point. <sighs> My Lord, uh, actually, I consulted with our ballistic expert. Yeah, what, what does he say? You no, my Lord, may I just address the court? He says, according to him, I have even indicated to my colleague. Are going to? I have even indicated to my colleague, Advocate Baloy, that he does not dispute the trajectory. <laughs> he, he, the, the measurements are consistent with his findings. So I was of the idea that we can just ask for the sake of completeness, but I can withdraw that question as well. No, no, you don't have to withdraw anything. I just want to understand. What do you want to demonstrate? Yes, so I want to check if that 1.34 was the exact um, measurement from the floor from the to, the, to the entrance wound. 
how do you demonstrate that? Because you're going to get a person with one, what's the, 1 7. the height of uh, the, the deceased? The height of the deceased was 1.77. Yeah, get a person with that height. I don't know where you're going to get him. And then you can say he must demonstrate how he located the wound on the chest and the exit wound at the, at the back. Fine. Yeah, there's something that I wanted to demonstrate actually, my lord. I'll try to to see how can I secure somebody with the the height of 1.7. Is it 1.77? 1.77. Yes. Mm. I'm not sure how. Yeah. From speed how? Yeah, 1.2. Yeah, 1.2. Sorry, it will be difficult to get the person now. Actually, your laser, ask him, the laser is more accurate. Actually, it will actually foretell what you can't prove. Because he will put it on where it says 1.77 and beam the light. Now you want to do it with a Bruger's uh, measurement. Now, you can use both, my lord. You can use the laser just to give a guideline. <laughs> May I request the, the witness to use the laser at the moment? Yeah, if you want him to use the laser, fine. Because it's difficult to get uh, the person with such a height. You know. <coughs> but for my edification, what is this exercise in aid of? Because the evidence is clear. The deceased sensor was shot from the front. From, yes. And the alleged, this is his evidence. The alleged shooter was a bit taller than Sonzo. And the trajectory of the fire or the bullet went downwards. Is that not what you said, sir? Well, the entrance wound is a contact shot in the chest. That's it's it. Higher yeah. than the exit wound at the back. That's the point. So the trajectory yes. is it's a downward angle. trajectory. But my concern is that the deceased was not standing upright. He was slightly bending forward. Do you agree with me, according to your observation? My lord, it's difficult to can say that he was bending a little bit front or to the front or was standing up straight. Because if you look at the trajectory, if he's standing up straight, the entrance is uh, just a little bit higher than that. The minute he bends down, it changes the trajectory completely. Mm -hmm. Because then the body bends to the front. Your trajectory can be a little bit straight. Yeah. And if it's a little bit straight, it doesn't fit to the trajectory of the bullet damage on the door. Because the damage on the door, it will not be at the same level as your entrance and exit wound. So what I would say is most likely was standing up straight, where it enters at the front at the, the one point, I think it's one point three six and mm. one point two six at the back, one point three four at the front, one point two six, two six at the back, and then the door is one point two. So yeah. it's a downward trajectory, and between the deceased and the door, there's a space, there's an opening. So yes. on that opening, it allows the bullet to, to 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 travel a little bit down. With about six centimeters, if you compare, because if it was against the, if this bag was against the the, the, the door, the trajectory that doesn't fit. So he has to move a little bit to the front to create the space where then the bullet can get the grace of losing about six centimeters to hit the door. Mm. Mr. Jonas, must I proceed? All right. So uh, when I was listening to your evidence in chief, you cannot rule a possibility that there was a struggle over there between the deceased and the, the shooter. Can you rule the possibility that there was a struggle? My Lord, since the deceased was shot in a contact shot, it's a loose contact shot. So in a loose contact shot, you cannot rule out the possibility that the deceased could have been, the deceased hands could have been on the firearm or there could have been a struggle between the deceased and the, 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 the shooter. Yeah, the probabilities could be two in relation to what I'm going to tell you. If there was a struggle, uh, if there was a struggle between the deceased and the shooter, especially on the damage, the damage on the floor, and you said it was approximately 90 degrees. That's correct, my lord. Yes. So the probability could be if there was a struggle, the firearm could have been facing down. As a result, a 90 degree shot was fired. Can now, you rule? In that instance, where the shot was the, uh, the 90 degrees to the ground. Yes. The firearm will be facing downwards. There's Correct. no other direction that it will face. It will be facing downwards. So to say that our, the distance between the ground and the firearm cannot be determined, but it was definitely facing downwards.
the possibility, the second possibility that the probability that I want to put in a form of your evidence could be that if a struggle for the, if there was a struggle between the deceased and the, and the shooter was on the level of a shoulder, a 90 degrees also could be a possibility to strike on the ground, on a level of a shoulder. If they were standing upright, maybe they were fighting for the, or whatever way they were fighting for, but on a level of a shoulder, and the firearm is facing downwards, could that possibility exist? That at that 90 degrees was shot on that level? Pilot, I cannot comment on the position of the firearm, whether it was at shoulder level. If it's at shoulder level, to turn it at 90 yeah, degrees, it's, it's, it's difficult. But if the hand is down, on this, facing down, this is the most likely it could have been the position. But at this end, and then you shoot down at 90 degrees, it's difficult. It's almost impossible to do that. Okay. Now let's proceed to where we ended before lunchtime. Then you proceeded to accuse number three, where he was, I think he was Johannesburg Correctional number Services. Three was at Johannesburg Correctional Services. Yes. You, you did the same exercise with Brigadier Yakinin. That's correct. Was he present? Was Brigadier Kininda present? Brigadier Kininda was present. Well, I just want to rectify. I think I've uh, confused the two incidents. At Valeria, we met first in the office, and then we went to at at at, at, at no at yeah at Pretoria North. Brigadier Kininda called me, and I met Mohano and someone else. I can't remember who was there, but I can recall that Brigadier was not there. <laughs> so before lunch, Colonel Mangena was very adamant to explain to Ngomen Zulu how it happened that he met up with. Brigadier Kininda on the 17th of June 2020. He was so insistent that he's not going to give a yes or no answer, but he wants to explain. Okay. Then he lets the cat out the bag that Kininda was there. Then they go for lunch immediately. They're back from lunch. And now he's stuttering. He's telling us he wants to make a rectification. He wants to rectify. Rectify. Rectify what, Mangana? We are done with that topic. We have moved on. We're now talking about accused number three. And you want to go back to Bongani Danzi because you know you sold Bong, uh, you sold Kininda. And you know what? We're sticking with the first answer. We are sticking with the first answer. How dare you, a colonel, okay? A colonel, a ballistic expert, try to change your answer on the witness stand. What a shame after lunch. What did you eat for lunch that suddenly helped you recollect your memory, sir? This is an embarrassment. It is time Judge Rata starts to take action so that people take that oath really seriously in his courtroom because it is a joke, okay? It is a joke. No way. There is no way. He couldn't even finish his sentence. He said, I met Mok I can't remember. He could not even finish his sentence. He started stuttering. He's no longer the guy who was so confident earlier at afternoon. Who told him at lunchtime that, dude, you sold out Gininda? Being a counsel, I'm sorry, Mr. Kennel Mangena. I'll just say it without even shame. I'm a counsel. I'll just tell you that in Sizul, I'll take what you said first. <clears throat> It's fine, but it's, a, it's what I can recall now, that what I'm saying. That I can recall that he was not there. Because you had, a, you had a chance for the whole hour to recall your evidence. You never said that in your evidence in chief. You never said that on the records. You never said that you're just fabricating it now. No, in After, all, during lunchtime now, you think, ah, oh, no, 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 that's not true. Please, Mr. Malot, we've been through this. Uh, we've referred to the relevant portions of the record namely page 53 of the record on the 30th of August 2023. Chris Ma, should just revisit the record. My Lord, the, the witness confirmed that he was with Brigadier Kininda uh, at Pretoria North in one of the offices at the station. I'll just leave it for, the, for argument. That is on record. Whether he's fabricating or not, I'll, I'll, I'll make it as a submission during my argument. Let's just pass. That's not what the witness said, my Lord. He said at Valeria, not at Pretoria North. <laughs> Mr. Baloy, we'll just rewind it if, so, if the court so pleases. As an avid note taker, he actually did say <laughs> Pretoria North, 17th 
of June 2020. And how do I know this? It's in my playlist, okay? Make sure you catch up on the playlist because it is definitely there. This is video. Let me just check which video this is. Video part four. Video four. Video part four. And that is when Mangena literally sat Pretoria. Um, Pretoria North Prison. And Valoi does not correct him then. Why is Valoi jumping up and down now? Stop it, Mr. Prosecutor. Let's get back to Ngomezulu. was commissioned. After the arrest of the accused in May of 2020. See, so you're referring to a document. What is it? These are, this is my notebook. That I normally write my notes when I... Did you make entries entries in that notebook? No, I made some notes when I was busy working on it. Yes. And, and, and when did you make those notes? I normally make notes on the same day when I have it. You want to refresh your memory out of the notebook? Yes, my lord. I just want to check the dates. You can maybe revert to those dates. You can just tell the court, the court what happened during, during those days. the dates. On the first date, I'll just confirm the date because I had it yesterday. I was called by the IO Brigadier de Pininda. I then was uh, Kenner. I said I must meet him at Sinovia because he want to he want me to assist to share an idea with him. Of course, if I can determine <clears throat> if looking at a person, can I determine My Lord, if that witness will be called? Mr. Court, please, my lord, the witness has hardly said anything. He's the investigating officer. We will be calling him. Um, maybe that evidence be provisionally allowed. Okay. It, was, <coughs> it was on the 1st of June when I was called by the I.O. Yes, 1st of June, which year? 2020. What he wanted to know from me is if I look at the bullet trajectory from the crime scene on the bullet that perforated the body of the deceased, and if we have a person of interest, can I be able to determine if the height of this person can allow him to be maybe to exclusively that this can be the person who discharged the firearm? And I said, it's not going to be possible to determine exactly because people might be of the same height and can react the same way or different height. But, and I said, no, but we'll look into it. Maybe we can determine something. I went to the police station where he was. When I arrived there, he told me that you've got the person of interest in the case. If I can look into it, I said, no, let me take the height of the person and take the shoulder level. If a person is shooting from shoulder level or if a person is shooting from elbow level, can this trajectory be maybe possible? And on that day at Bilaria Police Station, I found, pointed to me Musi Svia. Is it Musi or Musi Svia? Who is accused number one in the matter? I only took the height of a person and then took the shoulder level. His height was around... 1.73 meters, and then I took the shoulder level, which was around 1.47, then I took the, from the elbow level, which was 1.10 meters. Then I said, I'll look into the trajectory that I have on the scene and see if I can determine that. But on the 17th of June, 2020, the IO Brigadier Gininda called me again. He said he's got a second person of interest who can be a suspect in the event. What person I said, Pretoria North SAPS. And I said, let's do the same exercise to see if we can see the difference between the two uh, people. Okay. I did the same exercise, and it was Bongani, Sandy Tanzi. Okay. I did the same exercise. I took the height of the, which was 1.86, and then from shoulder level was 1.55, and then the elbow level was 1.19. Then I looked into their, the two people, because their height are different. Looked into the trajectory, but I said, no, it's not going to be possible to determine exactly which one more, because people might be of the same height, and then the arm is flexible, it can change direction, it can be of any height. So I said, no, let's look into something else that maybe can show us or give us direction. And um, Mangani Sanderson does which accuse is that? Which accuse number two. Then I looked into the crime scene photos again. I went through my report, I went through the crime scene photos. But when I was looking, I said, but with bullet hole, uh, shot, bullet, shot number one, which was direct to the tire, where I said the bullet fragmented and the fragment is cut off. I said, if anybody was around that area, it could have been hit by the fragments from this bullet. I said, let's also do the 
another exercise on this to check if we can see any scars or anything that can be related to the fragments on the feet of a person of interest. So you know what? I did you a favor. I took the time. I went. I took the clip from part five. I brought it here where, where Mangena says the I.O. called me and I went to Pretoria North. Baloi, forget the transcript on page 53. The transcript is not transcripting. The video, though, has Mangena saying what? Let me know in the comment section if I got this right. You're hearing it first here on Mzansi Unfiltered. Make sure you drop a subscribe and a like for all the work I'm putting in to put these together for you so you don't have to go out searching for the information. Let's continue listening on to today's version. Just move to accuse number three. You, you also did the same exercise. That's correct, madam. But there's something that you, you suggested which did not come from Kininda. After you concluded all these exercises you were performing on the heights of the accused, there's something that you suggested to look for any injury on the leg. Am I correct? That is correct, Malo. Yep. You are not the investigating officer in this case, correct? I'm not the investigating officer, but if it's ballistic related, then I've asked that I will do that. Yeah, it's fine. You can do it at any time. But it is one thing that is strange. That suggestion came when you approach accused number three. You, need, you did not perform that when you're doing it to accused number one and two, correct? That's correct. I did not perform that. And when I was at home looking at this thing, I, thought, what was it? I looked at this thing and I looked at the possibility. Then I said, but let me also do this and see if I can find anything from there. All right. So this thing came after you've done that exercise from accuse number one and number two. <coughs> Correct, my lord. I did that with accuse number three and also with accuse number four. And if you're wondering why not accuse number five, because accuse number uh, they did go. They did go. Accuse number five said, don't you dare touch me. I do not consent to this nonsense. Because you know what? I might have killed six people. I might be convicted for six people. But I'm no fool. South African Police Services, I know my constitutional rights. You will not measure me. Okay? Thank you. Have a nice day. Take me back to my cell. <laughs> That's how I imagine the conversation went. I mean, do you see accused number five? Why couldn't... I just don't understand why they didn't get those measurements out of him. I guess he has to consent. But could they not force him? <laughs> accused number five said, get me out of here. <laughs> And I think he's advised by Umshololo on his constitutional rights because he also refused with his fingerprints a second time. So I, were you aware of the... Did you have the knowledge of the facts of this case? You didn't discuss the, 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 the facts of this case with Prakatiya The facts of the case on the crime scene itself. Six. On the crime scene itself. The facts of this case. The person who shot Senzo, when Senzo was shot, who was in the house, all things that are relevant relating to 636. We did not discuss with him. Driving from wherever, Silverton to Valeria, from Silverton to Protean, uh, wherever, to Kalagabusha, to Loko, you did not discuss this with Brigadier Kenin, the facts of the case. My Lord, the facts of the case mean, I don't know which facts of the case I'm referring to. I'm referring to what transpired inside the house, or how did I reconstruct the incident? In so you had decided, all right, let me just put it this way. When you heard about the death of Senzo Meiwa, it has been reported on the media that how Senzo was shot. So I'm saying to you, when you met Brigadier Kininda, did you have knowledge of the facts that transpired, either through the media or from any other person other than Brigadier Kininda? My Lord, the facts that I had was that I did the reconstruction, and based on my findings on the reconstruction, those are all the facts that I have, where I was sure of the, my incident the case. And Captain uh, Bentley, Bentley, he did not uh, brief you with the facts as to how this thing happened for you to process the, the crime scene. He did not brief you about the facts. I, don't, I need clarity on which facts, because I don't know... As to how Senzo was shot. How Senzo was shot, that's how I could determine. That's how, how Senzo was shot. I just want to know. If you were not briefed, it's fine. We'll move on. If you were not briefed, I can just leave it for argument because you are a South African citizen. You reside around, you work around Pretoria. So let's just leave it for argument. Let's move on. You went to, my concern is that when you approach accused number three, the suggestion came from you. 
with an attempt to assist Brigadier Kininda to find an alternative way of getting the suspect. That's when you suggested that you should look at a person who was injured, who was injured. When it's your evidence that when he took out his shoe, then he told you that he was injured when he was playing football. Is that is that correct, so? Mara. That's what he told me. I'll leave that for Mr. Mnisi to advance on it, but did he consent? Did he voluntarily say that to you? That's correct. He voluntarily said it. Our only thing, the only thing that I have requested from you is that can you take off your shoes and your socks? I just want to check something on your legs. Yes. And that's when he said, no, the scars that you can see on my legs are from my childhood when I was playing soccer out there. What was your response after he, he did that? What did you do after that? Or what did you say after he has taken out those? Well, look, I didn't say anything. I continued to check, but I couldn't see any scars on the legs. But I'm, I'm going back to the, to the same question, to the same evidence that you said. If a person was closer to the person who shot, on the ground, could be injured. There was a possibility that even the person who was holding a firearm could have been injured by those, you said, fragmented and cause uh, damage to the next person. Was it possible that even the shooter could be uh, uh, injured? That's correct, Malu. Pos that possibility cannot be ruled out. And uh, after you, you have checked accused number three and uh, you concluded that there were no injuries? Malu, not necessarily that there were no injuries. Yes. I could not see any scars because the fragments would be very small. They could have created very small scars. And if you look at the time when we did the, conducted the test and the time of the incident, it's how many years passed. So the possibility that there could have been injuries and uh, the, the, the wounds were healed and the scars were, because they were very small, I couldn't see them. Based on what you are just saying now, the suggestion that you made to Brigadier Kininda, that means it was fruitless. It was fruitless because it didn't produce any results. Not necessarily fruitless. If I Did could have seen something. But you I didn't find anything. But because I didn't find anything. That's correct. It's, it's the same as taking all the measurements. I took all the measurements to try and determine something, but I couldn't determine anything Thank you. from that. So it's not fruitless. If anything could have transpired there, I, could have, I would have said something about it. I would have said, this is what I could determine. This is the possibility or the likelihood. Let's move to accused number five. You went to where he was kept, and you said he refused to be to be checked. That's what you said. That's correct, my lord. Number four, you went to Luoko prison. Then you proceeded with the same exercise to accuse number four. That is correct, my lord. No scars, nothing, no traces of any injuries. I couldn't see anything also. All right. I just want to understand But I'll get, I'll get to it as I'm getting with your evidence. Because I, you said it's part of your job description to go with the investigating officer to perform such uh, exercises that you have done. It's, it's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. With a ballistic expert going with the investigating officer to make such a follow-up information on the heights of the accused and... My Lord, for us to go out to a crime scene, do reconstruction, we receive requests from the investigating office. And I cannot do the examination without the presence of the investigating office. He must be there when I conduct that. If he asked me, call me and ask me to assist with something, I would go and check. If it's possible for me to assist them, I will assist. And if it's not possible, I will also tell him that it's not possible to get that. And let me just rephrase it. Uh, what actually led you to go to, what is that? Cleveland. What led you to go to Cleveland? To Police Cleveland? Station? Yes. My Lord, after we went to, to 
accused number 30 at Johannesburg prison. Brigadier Ginida told me, informed me that he had information that accused number three is the main suspect in this case, and he wants me to check if the firearm that he was arrested with in Cleveland, can we check the firearm and compare you know it what? with Let the police? Let me not combine issues. The Cleveland issue, you have to listen to it alone on a separate video because Ungo Mezulu does not play, okay? He just... It's how he transitions from one topic to another. He moved from the measurements, the shoes and the socks, and then boom. So how did you get to Cleveland? Like he does it so as a matter of fact, like my, like Mangena was not expecting this. Okay. He wasn't sure where we're going. Why is he asking me this? He's trying to be on top of things, but you just can't with Ungo Mezulu. And you know what? I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the reactions of Umlungo over there in the back because Umlungo is just staring at Mangena because it's just, it's just a sight to see. What is this man saying? Oh, that's an interesting question, Gomezulu. Okay, okay. Do you see what I mean? It has been an interesting day in Judge Rutter's courtroom and Gomezulu, per usual, is not holding back okay he is a not holding back especially when he said i'm just going to say it without shame i am a counsel and i'm going to take what you said first after lunch just because you've decided to change your answers or somebody called you or this is what you were told it is not going to work i've played for you part of um episode five of mangena's um testimony evidence in chief last year literally a year ago and you know what? To be fair, it has been a year. So he might have forgotten some of the stuff. He's forgotten that he had a whole book. And he opened the book. And he checked the dates and he verified. He checked his own notebook that he brought into evidence. Nobody asked him to bring it. He brought it, you know, as the overachieving student. Remember I used to say this with Stain. Stain used to love to talk over talk and talk too much when answering a question and then land himself in mud. This is what happened to Mangena today. Mangena... <laughs> found himself in the mud puddle okay he has egg on his face he has ostrich egg on his face like everything is going on for him especially the fact that wait so you're not the investigating officer but you came up with the bright idea to take off the accused socks and this idea only came up when you were now going to see accused number three why accused number three only hmm hmm why did your idea only work with him because you guys were trying to tie him to the senzo Meiwa trial and wow, this is a lot. I'm learning a lot. I am learning a lot from this case. Let me know some lessons that you have learned. Okay. I have learned to say, no, you can't take my height. <laughs> That's a new thing for me. No, you cannot take my height. Why, why do you need my height? Why are you trying to get my height? Hmm? Hmm? This is definitely a developing story. It's not going to end anytime soon. I don't think Gomez is going to end anytime soon. This is going to be a long week. I would have loved for Mshololo to have been in the house, in the courtroom as well. I would have loved to see her reactions, okay, to when uh, Mangena is responding to Ungo Mizrulu or when he's caught in a lie. Remember whenever Stein was caught in a lie and um, <laughs> Mshololo would peep over and whisper to Umnisi, yeah, that was missing in the court decorum today. But you know what? That is it from me today. If you've enjoyed this video, you already know the house rules here. Make sure you drop a like, share the, share the video. Everybody has got to see that the transcript and transcripting and Mzansi Unfiltered has the recording right here. And this is what the colonel said last year. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. I absolutely love it when you do. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. We, we are dropping nuggets throughout the day, so you don't want to miss it. Turn on your notification bell. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on my next upload. And if you've watched the ads, oh my goodness, thanks so much. That supports myself as a creator, and I absolutely, absolutely appreciate it. And as I'm just reading this, a comment comes in. Let me read it out. Oh my goodness. Wow, this is an interesting comment. This comment says, yes, I, t I keep telling you guys, I see all your comments. This comment says, my analyst, you deserve an award straight. Yes, you have a brilliant mind. Ooh. And then, no, I'm not a yellow phone. <laughs>
definitely I am not a yellow phone. Definitely will not be counted amongst yellow phone, but that is hilarious. Well done. Thank you so much. Oh my God. And that came in so timely. It made it into my last video. So let me know if, if you don't respond to this video, then I know you didn't watch the video till the end. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for that beautiful comment. I'll catch you on my next upload.